Good evening. Uh, it is Tuesday, July 10th, 2018. I'm calling the regularly scheduled meeting of the Simsbury Planning Commission to order 7.04 p.m. Okay. If everyone would please rise and uh, join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> and I believe SCTV is recording this, so uh, if that's the case, thank you, SCTV. <laughs> okay, let's move on to uh, the roll call. Please say here when I call your name. Holly Bem. Here. David Bloomy, Aaron Levitt Smith. Here. Craig McCormack. Here. Alan Needham. Here. William Rice. Here. Elizabeth Burt um, uh, could not make it tonight. She let me know about that, so she's absent. Richard Cortez. Here. And Gary Lungarini is absent. One, two, three, four, five. Rich, I'm going to uh, ask you to uh, be promoted to a regular member tonight. Get our commission to a full six. Very good. You are seated. <laughs> okay. Um, our last meeting was on June 26th. Minutes have been distributed, and if uh, the secretary could lead us through that, please. The, uh, uh, potential approval. At the top of my page, it says agenda, and I think it should say minutes. Good catch. <laughs> You're that's, right. That's as far as I got. <laughs> <laughs> no, I read that. I wasn't at the meeting, but Boy, are there we, any... Look at that. We missed that. Any changes on page one? Oh, I didn't see any. Nope. Any changes on page two? Uh, no. No? Nope. Anybody? Nope. Okay. Can we have a motion to approve the minutes as corrected? I move to for, approve the minutes as corrected. For, for Tuesday, June 26th. For Tuesday, June 26th. Thank you. Second. Motion by Holly. Second by Aaron. I want to put it to a vote, Mr. Secretary. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Motion So carried. I abstained. I wasn't here. Okay. So Craig abstained. I'm, and I'm not voting or abstain. On okay. You so we had four yeas and two abstentions. Okay. Very good. Next on the agenda, old business. We have no open public hearings. We have no old applications. Old business is closed. Moving on to new business. Receipt. We don't even have chairs. Receipt of new applications. Nothing in the packet. Uh, but we do have a referral from the. Board of Selectmen, and this is, uh, re we've been asked by the Board of Selectmen uh, to review the feasibility of implementing, well, I'm sorry, the, the Board of Selectmen established a subcommittee to review the feasibility of implementing a water shortage ordinance. The draft of that ordinance is included with this letter. Does everyone have the letter? Yes. Okay. Um, so we've uh, been asked to uh, provide a referral um, seeking feedback on the proposed water shortage ordinance. Of course, uh, our capacity is uh, com comparing the proposed ordinance to the uh, 2017 Plan of Conservation and Development. So I will open up uh, discussion. I went through the POCD and made a couple of notes. That the first thing I would say is there's nothing in there that argues against this uh, mm -hmm. uh, proposed ordinance. There's there's some references to protecting water quality, which isn't exactly the same thing as water quantity. Mm -hmm. Although I think you can make an argument that sometimes they're related. Um, 
On page 28, it talks about uh, protecting water resources. On page 97, I saw a reference to an encouraging water conservation, which isn't quite the same thing. But on page 118, it said to, uh, there's a reference to encouraging water companies to maintain safe and adequate supplies of water. And it does seem to apply there. But again, uh, my main point would be there's nothing in here that would argue against mm -hmm. the ordinance. That's my opinion. Any other comments, commissioners? Um, Mr. Chairman, um, my, my only uh, concern is that I don't see any metrics or sufficient differentiation uh, between uh, a stage one uh, water a shortage and a stage two, a threatened water shortage and critical water shortage. In, in both cases, they'll figure it out when it happens is really the metric that we get. Um, but when they say it seems appropriate that the adequacy of the, for stage one, the adequacy of town water supply to meet the demands for health, sanitation, and preservation of business is threatened. And the only difference between that and, and stage two is just a few more adjectives uh, in danger of reaching levels insufficient to provide for the normal needs of the public health, preservation, uh, sanity, safety, and welfare, and economy of the town. It would just be nice to have seen a little more differentiation as to what that means and how that will be determined. But I don't think that the POCD speaks to that of any, uh, in any particular uh, uh, sense. Uh, I'm just throwing that out there as a concern I had in reading it. If, if you wanted to, if we wanted to talk about that, I think we should go to whatever public hearing comes up. Okay. So you're saying, yeah, I agree. I, I just wanted to throw it out our there. function. Yeah. I, could just, okay. I can clarify this because I was the staff member for this subcommittee um, and have been part of this since uh, early in 2017. So this draft that you have before you, the stage one and stage two. So stage one is when the town uh, consults with the utility providers in, in the area. Uh, Aquarion, Connecticut Water, Terrafield Fire District, and we're in a drought or a dry period, and they determine, you know what, I think it's I think it's appropriate to ask for people to do some voluntary conservation measures. So it's stage one, it's a voluntary conservation measure. So don't water your lawns, don't wash your cars, try to try to like limit the amount of water usage. At stage two is when, after consultations with this same group, um, they've determined that guess what, this, this drought is prolonged and we are starting to see uh, impacts to our water supply. Therefore, if we, the, the voluntary measures are not working. Now we're going to mandatory conservation measures. And then in subsection, in uh, 157.4, there's a series of A through uh, J. These are activities that the Board of Selectmen can uh, implement to say, these are mandatory, such as you can't water your lawn, you can't uh, wash your vehicles off, uh, you can't clean and flush sidewalks, etc. And these are aimed to, these are the conservation measures, which if someone were to ignore or violate these measures, they're subject to a citation process, uh, similar to like the blight code, or we just passed the stormwater ordinance that was required by DEEP. Um, so... That's the, that helps, Holly? Um, I, I mean, I, I see the need for two different stages. I just thought the metrics were still a little vague. But um, I think you actually um, used oh, you better know, wording right. when you explained it. <laughs> but I, 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 but I, I agree with Alan. It's probably not our purvey here. You know? I agree with you. I think uh, it's very subjective. But if that's the way the ordinance is... Uh, designed to be, um, it's kind of hard to predict what's going to happen when something's right. that uh, subjective. So um, what I might suggest is when we make the, uh, the motion that we include uh, not just the, the, how it compares to the POCD, but um, maybe just make a note. You know, it's our, the, the commission's uh, feeling that... Uh, or observation. Observation that uh, their lack of metrics to... Differentiate stage one and stage Metrics two. Metrics would be tough. 
I mean, yeah. if you have a well, even some dry general ones. summer <laughs> following a dry winter, that's a different story than the same dry summer following a wet winter. How do you well, establish how, how, how would how would how would someone determine if you're in a threatened situation based on the number of days without rain or? That's uh, why we don't want to talk about that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but that's what that group. The river do. level, you know, right. heights. But that, that's all measurable, right? No, right. Yeah. Yeah. Reservoir levels, wells, uh, uh, storage tanks. You know, if it gets to a certain level, that rainfall in a particular water. period of time, right? Well, well, if you, if you were in a weather pattern well, that kind mean, of last summer, that's where maybe the voluntary measures may come into play. We're concerned because it's been a prolonged time that we've not received a measurable uh, and rain. And you don't know how long it'll last. We don't know how long it's going to last. So we're going to implement these voluntary measures and see what happens. In the meantime, you know, I, I, we know this after meeting with the Terrafield Fire District, they have real-time data on their wells mm -hmm. and monitor it at, at a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So they know, hey, wow, the pressure is really dropping. Something's going wrong. Mm -hmm. And they have their own, they actually have uh, separate uh, conservation measures that they implement that, or they tell the customers, the ratepayers, that, you know, in a time of, of need, you can't do the following okay. activities. So, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna so you're introducing metrics there. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> it just, Sorry, it's, no, I'm getting... Say this is on the books and we go through a long, drawn-out climate change and fast forward 50 years, you could actually make this rather capricious, too, at the whim of the town. If you don't have some metrics to differentiate it, if well, it becomes... you know, now I think about it, I like I like Alan's idea. When it goes to public hearing, yeah. we, we can yeah. go as yeah. concerned citizens and would, voice yeah, these. Right. Right. Have, and you're not a member of the planning commission; right. you're just Bill Rice. And yep. mm -hmm. I think you'll yeah. have more impact, and you'll get an answer back. And I okay, okay. yeah, we're I, all agreed. As I usual. agree. I, yeah. I don't think yeah. it's yeah. I so we, we agree that the POCD best. supports doing this yeah. by all means. Just supports yeah. the notion of water conservation in an yeah. emergency. And I would sure. say, piggybacking on Alan, on 26, it does talk about enforcing regulations intended to protect existing public water supply oh. wells oh. and aquifers yeah. associated recharge areas. So there's even more better stuff yeah. than that. So I can reference that number. Yeah, 5.1A. Yeah. I mean, it specifically we wrote talks such a about good document. Yeah, you guys did. <laughs> what was that? Um, Ellen, what other, um, uh, well, Aaron tops all the ones I had. 5.1 A2. A2. I think that tops all the ones yeah. I said. Yeah, I mean, that, that specifically talks about protecting, enforce, and, and actually it says enforcing regulations intended to, um, that's exactly what this is, on 26. Thank you. The ordinance also talks about protecting businesses that need to use water. Correct. So I think it goes a little further than just that. Yeah, so there's economic right, but this, development. I'm, I'm, yeah, right. that's just one that really talks about the water supply. Good. Okay, then that's, I'll, I'll, that's I'll, the best. the best one. I'll make a motion um, that the, uh, the Simsbury Planning Commission finds the uh, draft water shortage ordinance uh, to be consistent with the 2017 Simsbury Plan of Conservation and Development, uh, supported specifically by um, Article 5.1.A.2 on page 26. Mm -hmm. Second. Any discussion? Good Do we want to add to that motion? The recommendation. Well, no, I guess it's. Oh, yeah. Never mind. Never mind. Yeah. I, I withdrew yeah. that. I think we're, I think we're fine. <laughs> okay. Any 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 further discussion? All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. Can I just say again? This is so lovely to use <laughs> and look through to find what we need. <laughs> so much easier. Oh yeah. Okay, good job. Next on the agenda. Now we get to the hard stuff. Okay, um, we have some outstanding uh, work to take care of with the subdivision regulations. If you remember, um, Mike Lydon was, uh, was kind enough to uh, put together some revised words to um, bring the regulations in compliance with uh, some new state regulations uh, federal. federal regulations okay 
and um, uh, we felt that uh, since we'll have to have a public hearing, um, if we took the uh, opportunity to review the um, subdivision regulations and uh, consider any additional changes that we can put forth at that uh, public hearing. Now, Jamie Rabbit had been working on um, changes to, to Section 7, Section 9, oh, 8, and 9. Are the, are the ones that are printed out tonight any different than the ones we were handed last time? These are easier to read. Oh, I'm sorry. These are reduced to 8, 8 and 11. And these are, this is the last. Is this, I mean, is, has it been seven. changed in the last two weeks? There was a few no. changes. Okay. Because um, they had changed okay. putting in the. No, th that, that's why I'm just asking. Okay. But that's, no. that's the standard, the FEMA language, just plugged in. And then uh, I think these, a lot of these, the highlights are in here, were from Jamie's work in yep. Chapter 7, or Section 7, I'm sorry. We have... So we did notice, um, Mike, Section 9, okay, which is the bulk of the proposed changes, Mm -hmm. um, okay, so it's not really, it's not really, um, let's see, paragraph G. Okay, so it goes G, it's, uh, let me see, third page before the end. That's the way to do it. Construction plans, uh, this is under the proposed column. You see that? Mm hmm Okay, so the the, uh, the the lettering goes G, and then it restarts at E. Yeah, I pointed that out last time. Yeah, right. yeah. I remember you. Where? So, keep going. Oh. So here's G. Yeah, and it goes did, to E. You did point. So that Rich out. pointed that out last time. Yeah. I just and Mike wasn't here that time. Yep. Uh, and. Uh, Yes, I so, apologize. This is the last draft they had. Okay, this. and that just that just carries through. Yep, that'll be yeah. that can be changed. Yep. Um, also had a question for item which is currently called M on uh, section nine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Refers to um, application uh, subdivision application including land. Above the 250 foot elevation on the eastern slopes of town and above the 350 foot elevation on the western slopes of town as described in the Simsbury Plan of Conservation and Development. Now, I looked at our current POCD and I do not see those numbers. Yeah. <clears throat> I know that that came out of the 2007, and it's really, it's the hillside protection, um, the scenic, and I, I know which section of the old uh, POCD, but you're right, I don't think it calls out specifically those elevations. Is it in um, our existing subdivision regulations? It is. I know that the eastern slopes, that that's under the ridgeline so protection statutes identified by the trap trap. Ridge, ridge line, um, eight to uh, I in the statutes. Because there's, there's basically what's con confined a, uh, a trap ridge line, sure. trap rock ridge line. Yeah, yeah. It's identified and there's very specific geographic locations. This is part of uh, the area that was identified. So. My guess is that that's still a carryover from the, the current subdivision regulations, okay. which kind of predates ridgeline protection. Because okay. that's what enables you to require the visual plans to show limits of clearing, to ask that um, the, the new houses are kept with an earth tone, um, so you don't have basically what you see if you're on uh, roof, uh, roof 4 in Avon looking up at the hill. Yeah. You see the houses that are there, they've cleared off the ridge, and yeah. all you see is that house. That's a house that was built pr 
prior to ridgeline protection. So this is kind of a, a ridgeline protection regulation. Okay. So I still like the requirement, mm -hmm. but I think we can strike the term as described in the yeah. Simsbury Plan of Conservation and Development. Okay. Okay. It's not necessary. The regulation mm -hmm. is going to define right. what, what the requirements are. Um, so, texturally, that, that those are all my comments. Um, the only other thing that I had to say is um, Jamie was going to run this by engineering. I did speak to the town engineer. He has not had time to look at this. Okay. So. Because and so engineering is about to start updating the street uh, regulations, so they wanted we want to do both these hand in hand. Um, so uh, Jeff will take I he has the document and I'll follow up with him. Okay. Um, so so let's just have the the minutes uh, reflect the the request that's still outstanding to have uh, the engineering department review. The proposed uh, revisions. Now, as far as the um, the, the 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 flood related changes, Mike, mm -hmm. are they in here too? They they are in. Are those the ones that are? Um, Highlighted or uh, uh, in a darker, color. darker color. Okay. Yeah. Um, I can point you to. Um, you're in uh, section nine, general uh, requirements in subsection E, subsection V. That's all new. It's, it's a darker color. That's a. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a uh, third, uh, three, uh, three pages <coughs> from the back, and then um, follow up in E, subsection 10. That also is the uh, yeah. portion that is required. Yeah, okay. So, and that's the language straight from um, Diana Kutch, the uh, National Flood Insurance uh, Coordinator for the state of Connecticut. Okay, good. So, commissioners, you have another shot at reviewing this. Um, you know, we're not going to take any action until uh, engineering has an opportunity to make their comments. Um, as far as timing for the public hearing, Mike, mm -hmm. um, do we have a target for that? Do we? Uh, is there a time at which we have to have this work completed? Okay. I mean, uh, in conversation with Diane Ipkovich, she is willing to work with us on timing because really the Zoning Commission did the major uh, updates that were required. Um, if we were to complete this by, let's say, the end of October, um, I think we're okay. fine. Um, because as the restudy activities start, FEMA will look at our regs to make sure our regs are current. We're going to be a unique community where they'll look at us and say, "Wow, you guys are great. You're you're ahead of the curve." Good. That's where we like to be. Yeah. So we um, October's fine, but you know, there's no reason to have it linger if we're ready to uh, to, to take action. Agreed. And I think we have no meetings in August. We have one more meeting this month, mm -hmm. and then none in August. Everyone can go on vacation in August. <laughs> we we may have an application referred to you from the zoning commission, so we may have to meet in two weeks um, for a text amendment. Okay. So. Oh, that's scheduled. Yep. Regularly. Oh, uh, regularly scheduled. Not, not yeah. especially. Thank you. Um, and I'll I'll work through the chair to just to inform the group if that application is filed. Okay. But yep. I am anticipating that there'll be one referral coming to you. Okay. Good. Okay. Uh, any, any correspondence, uh, Mr. Glidden, or uh, anything else the commission should be made aware of? Nothing right now. Commissioners, any comments? Okay. You guys are all ready to uh, button stuff up? <laughs> okay. 
Someone make a motion? I make a motion we adjourn. Second. A motion made by Holly Bem, seconded by Rich Cortez. Okay, so all in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Meeting is adjourned, 729. Wow. New record.